Welcome back to Learn Piezo. Today we're going to speak about a viewer submitted question regarding voltage, force, and the rate of change. Uh, this is specifically talking about a sensor uh, where you apply a force and, you know, getting a voltage and how, how all of that relates in a, in a real world environment where you are actually um, going to use something like a multimeter or an oscilloscope and other, other type of device to measure. Um, in addition to providing instructional videos on Learn Piezo, I also provide product development support for ultrasonic devices. So head over to ultrasonicadvisors.com and sign up for a consulting call if you are uh, interested in my services or um, keep in touch by getting on my email list. So here's the question. I'm a student trying to carry out an investigation about the piezoelectric effect. I'm trying to find the relationship between the force applied on a piezo element and the voltage it produces. Now, in the past, in, in this video, and also in this little screenshot uh, that I was sent, uh, there is a very clear, well-defined equation uh, relating the force and the voltage. Uh, but there's a question here because we don't always, you know, it's not just about a calculation. It's actually about calculating something that you can measure in the lab and, and use to create a sensor or device or better understand it. Because I, I, I think it's absolutely important for somebody to try this these equations out. I do that in some of my videos, but not all of them. Uh, but to go ahead and get in there and try, try these um, equations and see how they fare. So here, um, uh, the viewer who submitted this question didn't find this equation to be true. And we're going to explore here. So here we have the voltage um, related to the piezoelectric G coefficient and stress uh, over uh, the thickness there. Um, we could also, I mean, kind of the classic equation that I that I bring forward to understand um, voltage uh, generated is actually through first through charge because the piezoelectric charge coefficient relates the force on a piezo element, you know, we're going to assume everything in the three three direction. Basically, you're pressing on the piezo uh, parallel to the polarization direction. Um, so we can go ahead and then explain that uh, derivation here. So you have the uh, charge um, that is developed on the piezo element is equal to the d coefficient uh, multiplied by the force and the voltage is then given by the capacitance and the charge. So Q equals uh, CV, um, charge equals the capacitance times the voltage, uh, and uh, in order to get the voltage you divide the charge by the capacitance. Uh, so there is a very kind of definite uh, force uh, to um, voltage relationship that you can derive. But the question is, it continues here, and in another video I mentioned, uh, you know, the, the video being spoken about is the video 7E, so in another video uh, we see this slide. So in this slide we have an alternating force. Uh, because, you know, the real world isn't exactly static and sensors, most of the time we are, for, especially for piezos, we're, we're looking for like something like an accelerometer or other types of sensors where we are measuring variable uh, forces. So in that case, I, I, in this specific uh, screenshot of my video, I'm showing a short-circuited piezoelectric element with a force applied. So we have a short circuit piezo element, and there's a force applied, and you know understand. And, and I'm going to describe how the force relates to current. Now, current is ch is change in or flow of charge. So the current equals dQ uh, dt. Uh, and that equals the uh, piezoelectric G coefficient divided by the thickness multiplied by the uh, derivative of stress with regards to time. Um, 
So we can also get rid of the you know area component and we can arrange the equation uh, like so. So now we have current defined by the change in force over change in time. Uh, so the viewer continues and writes, however, you know, I was confused by this fact that on the one hand, the voltage is determined by the force. And on the other hand, the current is determined by the change in force or change in time. So however, I was wondering, uh, the viewer writes, since I, since current is proportional to voltage, wrong, this is the wrong part here. Current is not proportional to voltage. Current is proportional to voltage if you are, if you are using and you are modeling a resistor. Um, and this is a great question. I'm so happy this question was asked because it's uh, it's kind of vital for understanding here. Voltage equals current times uh, resistance is not um, is not a uh, relationship which is true in this in, in this format. In, in this slide here specifically, we have a short circuit scenario where we are literal where the the current is equal to the appearance of charge, the rate of charge generation, because there's actually no resistance here. So basically, however much charge the piezo generates on the surface, all of that charge is depleted instantly. So uh, all so the charge generated here is equal to the current. So however much, because we can also go back uh, to the previous slide uh, and see that um, the Q, the charge, is equal to the voltage, uh, sorry, equal to the force times the piezoelectric D coefficient. But we don't say there's any current, though, uh, because the charge is not traveling through a wire. So um, if you wanted to talk, there's no current flow. There's this charge appearing and disappearing. But in this slide here, because in because charge is actually flowing through that wire that we use for short circuiting, therefore you'll have the you'll have current appearing, uh, and you don't have V equals IR. Um, so uh, the viewer then writes, then wouldn't that imply voltage must also be proportional to D at to the change in force or change in time? So uh, yeah, I think I just addressed that that because of V equals IR is not valid. Um, then uh, for, for, for a piezo that's short circuited or for a piezo that's open circuit for, uh, you know, however Q equals CV, that's always valid. Um, that's, a, that's always a valid equation. And the other equation which is valid is uh, Q equals, in a static condition, in an open circuit static condition, um, Q equals um, D times F. But if you want to actually go for the differential form, that is always going to be uh, true. As the, ch uh, the change in appearance of charge, it's not current anymore, but the change in appearance in charge uh, or charge generation rate is proportional to the change in force um, multiplied by the D coefficient. And you know, depending on your initial conditions, um, it will change your charge state because you could actually push the piezo uh, create charge, deplete that charge, remove that wire that used to deplete the charge, and then put an alternating force on top of the force you already had previously applied, and you'll still get a similar answer um, that will that will that will relate to the charge change. So the initial conditions are important. If you if if you care about those, then you'll have to use uh, the differential form. Uh, so here, uh, the user writes, what I read, also learned online that the voltage will be produced directly proportional to the rate of change of force. Um, so that, I'll have to look at what this, this, uh, um, this writes, uh, and I'll do that right now. So this specific article talks about an op-amp configuration and with an integrator, uh, which then would uh, lead to the change in force being related to the change in voltage, um, uh, to, to a voltage. 
Um, so in that, in that case, for a specific circuit, there may be different relationships developed between the voltage measured and uh, the input. However, if we look at it on a more elemental level, um, as we typically do during uh, during my videos, uh, then we would see that uh, change in force uh, would be related to current under certain situations. Um, you know, here you have a couple of extra circuit components, including including an op amp uh, and external capacitors. Uh, and external capacitors have a ha have also other effects on the piezo itself. Um, it actually draws off the charge such that when you you know the same the same amount of charge is generated with a applied voltage. However, um, that charge is now spread over a larger capacitance, uh, which is both the external capacitor and the capacitance of the piezo. And, and because we're spreading the same amount of charge over a larger amount of capacitance, the voltage is actually less than you would normally uh, see when looking at the piezo in an elemental format. So uh, the viewer then uh, writes, as such I hypothesized that that was the case and when I experimented a little bit for myself it seemed to agree with that you know previous statement. Now I was claiming that hey that you know change in force equals voltage that is because of um, 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 that's because of, no, I just um myself uh, too much, but uh, that's because of uh, the short circuit condition, or that's, that was, sorry, that was because of the, the circuit that they used to uh, probe the piezo. Um, so as such, I hypothesized that that was the case when I experimented for myself, it seemed to agree. And so now I, my position that uh, that is not, it's now going to be dependent on how you're doing the measurement. So I connected the voltage sensor which is a voltmeter, I'm guessing, or multimeter, or a, um, what do you call, or a um, P, or, or, or a kind of a microcontroller. I've seen that some people using microcontrollers to measure the voltage over the piezo. Uh, I, I wouldn't recommend that, um, but you know, you, you gotta use what you have. Uh, so when I applied the force on the piezo very slowly, but a large force, and there wasn't much change in voltage. That's what number one. There wasn't much change in voltage when I put it slowly. However, when I applied less force and applied it quickly, there was a large voltage spike, large voltage change. So I'm unsure what the theory is related to voltage and force, and I hope to clarify this, and what other formula exists. So I'll explain this quickly uh, in, 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 a, in a straightforward way. So force E, 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 you know, kind of without confusing you, but basically when you press on the piezo, charge is generated, but in order to measure, uh, and that charge causes the voltage of the piezo, but in order to measure that charge, uh, you have to hook up an external circuit or multimeter or a um, or like a microcontroller directly. And when you measure using a microcontroller, uh, especially, you have to draw some of that current or charge is drawn off of the piezo to measure. Now, when you're measuring like a you know a power supply, like a few like a kind of microamps or a few tenths of a milliamp, won't make any difference in that voltage source because it has a lot of charge built into it. However, when we are looking at, um, uh, when we are looking for uh, measuring a voltage over a capacitor which has a small capacitance, whenever you hook up your external uh, equipment, the voltage is going to get sucked out because of the charge that's required or the current that's required by the external component to drive it because basically if you want to look at a multimeter you, it hooks up let's say it hooks up a resistor in parallel with your capacitor or sorry sorry in parallel with your piezo and then the chart you know some of that current is drawn over that internal resistor and the voltage is thereby measured using a kind of voltage divider network most likely uh, so however in the case of um, in the in the case where we are measuring our piezo with in a quick way like putting the voltage really quickly well the charge doesn't have as much time to dissipate so it actually gathers on the surface so therefore applying a slow applying for slowly actually allows time for that charge to dissipate over our measurement device
but if we are applying our charge, uh, are applying our force very quickly, but even if it's lower, the charge generation rate is a lot higher. Therefore, there's going to be accumulated charge while the RC time constant, which governs how uh, fast the charge or the voltage built up on the piezo bleeds off, is, is going to be in effect. So, therefore, without external, special external circuitry, you will not be able to measure uh, the uh, force directly, rather the change in force is, is a more accurate parameter because it the change in force, for example, on accelerometer would uh, help us to uh, measure uh, acceleration, which would be changing uh, over time, uh, but uh, in, in sort of an oscillating uh, environment. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about force, change in force, short circuit, open circuit, charge generation, and the relationship between force and current and voltage. Um, so please support me by subscribing to this uh, to my channel, uh, Learn Piezo. Hit the bell for notifications, and uh, be sure to visit LearnPiezo.com for more videos, and also UltrasonicAdvisors.com to learn more about my consulting platform. Thank you and see you next time.